What is Google BigQuery? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're gonna talk about BigQuery, one of the products in the Google Cloud Platform that allows us to easily work with big data. We'll go over the features, components, tools that we can use to interact with BigQuery. We'll jump into the Cloud Console and I'll show you how easy it is to work with BigQuery. And we'll also look at the big picture. Where in the hay does BigQuery fit in our big data pipeline? Let's start with the basics. What is Google BigQuery? It is Google's fully managed data analysis service offering in the cloud. It enables for super fast analysis, and it's really gonna streamline those pipeline to analysis workflows. The world of big data and data analysis has really exploded recently, but there's a barrier. That barrier is it takes a lot of time and money to set up your own data analysis infrastructure. You also need a lot of skilled people to make it all happen. So Google abstracts most of that from us with BigQuery. All we need to do is get our data up into their cloud and we can start analyzing it, no problem. They take care of the infrastructure, they take care of all the hard stuff, and they give us a SQL-like language to work with. So we don't need low-level programmers to write MapReduce jobs or learn other frameworks to access and analyze that data. Let's get familiar with the components. First up, we have projects, and projects are always gonna be your top level item inside of the Google Cloud Platform. In BigQuery, it's gonna contain users, authentication, billing information, that kind of stuff, and that is where our data sets are going to live. A data set is really just a container for tables. They exist because they allow us to control security at the data set level. You cannot set access control lists at the table level. Those are done at the project and data set level. So projects contain data sets, data sets contain tables, Tables are where the data lives, and that's what we'll be querying directly. And jobs are going to be the, 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 the asynchronous processes that run in the background to load data or export data, or in some cases, uh, execute large queries. The tools we're going to use to interact with BigQuery, we have the browser tool, which is just the web UI, the Google Cloud Developers Console. And within the BigQuery area, we have a really nice interactive console that we can use to write queries. They also provide a bunch of nice sample data sets. We can import and export our own. We can do it all using the web UI. We also have the BQ command line utility that allows us to do everything we can do in the web UI locally through the command line. We can manage and administer and even write queries through this tool. It comes with the Google Cloud SDK and it's, it's really easy to work with. And BigQuery comes with its own RESTful API so we can programmatically tap into BigQuery from virtually anywhere. So to run over the features here, interactive cloud-based analytics. We can query massive data sets in second. Here's a big one, SQL-like query support. If you're a SQL data professional, you can jump right in, feel at home, and start ripping off queries in seconds. Simple data access and management. We just have projects, data sets, and tables. That's it. There's really not a lot to it, and ACLs that we can tie at the data set and project level. It's a breeze getting data in and out of BigQuery. If we can get our data into a JSON or CSV format, then we can push our data up to Google Cloud Storage, or we can just do an HTTP post right into our tables in BigQuery. So we've got options here. We can bulk load our data, which will spin up a job that runs asynchronously so we can constantly check the status. Uh, and we can also programmatically stream our records in to BigQuery. We also get seamless integration with the other Google Cloud Platform products. And the, really the bottom line here is it's gonna reduce the time and cost of big data analysis. Google handles the infrastructure and it's so cool that they gave us a SQL-like language to work with our big data. So here's an architectural diagram that shows how we could use the Google Cloud Platform to come up with a big data solution, pipeline to analysis. And there's two workflows in here. There is the data workflow and there's the visualization workflow. Essentially how this works is we need to get our source data into BigQuery. We can do that by using whatever means necessary, <laughs> ETL tools to pull our data out from, from our existing relational databases or wherever that data comes from and pipe it into Google Cloud Storage. So that's the first step. Extract it from the source system, denormalize it, because BigQuery likes denormalized data, the less joins the better, then get it into Google Cloud Storage. From there, and these are optional components, hence the dotted lines here, from there we could still bring out the heavy artillery. We could have uh, Hadoop clusters running on Compute Engine instances, or we could use the MapReduce framework accessible from App Engine to do any further pre-processing or transforming of that data. And this transformation process, for example, could get our data into a CSV or JSON format that we can then easily use to load in to BigQuery. Once it's in BigQuery, it's all visualization from there. For instance, we could use App Engine along with the BigQuery API to pull the data out. And then we could use a Charts API to map that data into a nice interactive digital dashboard. So what are people using BigQuery for? Just to give you a couple of real world use cases, log analysis, 
System or application-generated logs can provide a wealth of information. Uh, for example, App Engine. A lot of people like to take their App Engine logs, load them into BigQuery, and then they can do analysis to identify certain application behaviors or user behaviors. And we can use that information to, uh, to fine-tune and improve that user experience. Retail forecasting is another one. The more data a business has, the more accurately they can predict product sales over the next n number of days or months or years, and that will allow them to plan better, to ensure that they have enough inventory on hand for certain months and they don't order too much uh, in other months. Ad targeting, extremely popular with big companies like Amazon and eBay, where you buy something and then it'll look at others who bought that and give you recommendations based on your purchases. We call that collaborative filtering. Extremely popular. And also just regular old data mashups, bringing data together from multiple sources and mashing it up to get new insights to how they relate to one another. All pretty standard big data stuff there. Now let's jump into the Google Cloud Console and I'll show you how we can use BigQuery to analyze lots of data in very little time. All right, so we're on our OSX machine here. Let's bring up the Google Cloud Console. And you can see I'm already logged in. I've already got our, our GCP Nuggets project ready to go here. Once we're in here, we can come down and choose BigQuery. That's going to load up the BigQuery uh, interface here. And it's very simple. I mean, you have your query history. We have none. We have our job history here. Here is our project itself. So up here, you can change projects if you have other projects, which I do have in there. But we'll just hit Create New Data Set. And let's just call this My Data Set. And we'll hit OK. And Wow, that was as easy as that. <laughs> we made a data set. We could put a description in there, or we could create tables now in this data set. We can create it from scratch if you want to create a table with the schema. You know, it's all pretty standard table stuff. You have columns where you specify the data types for the data that goes into those columns and rows. All very, very standard stuff. But if we look down here, we have all these public samples. And these are really cool because we could click on any of these. In fact, let's, uh, let's pick the weather data one here, the GSOD data. And here it's going to show us the schema. So here's all the fields, here's their data types, and then their mode, either required or nullable. And then you can put a description in, into each one of these. You can also hit details here. It'll give us a little preview. It'll show us how much data is in here, 16.1 gigabytes, 114 million rows, quite a bit. And, uh, and now we can hit query table and just start writing queries against it. And the beautiful thing is you don't even need to write. <laughs> you can go over here to schema and start clicking around, and it'll write the query for you. Pretty cool stuff. So let's just click mean temp here. We'll get the mean temp, the year, month, day, and mean, mean temp from this, from this public data set. If we hit run query, it's going to run it. 2.2 seconds over 3.41 gigabytes of data process. We've got, uh, we limited it to 1,000 rows here, but that was pretty quick. Two seconds against three gigs of data. Not bad. All right, so I wrote a quick query, and very simple, but it kind of shows that we, we can use aggregates here, average, min, max. We have a where clause, we have a group by, we have an order by. So all the standard SQL stuff that you know and love. You can also hit the open validator here, which will validate our query and show us how much data this will run over. So same exact thing. I'll hit run. We'll see how long. Same exact time. Two seconds against 3.41 gigabytes of data. We also have some options here. Let's open them up. So this is really neat. We can take the results of this query and throw them into another table. So let's just make a table here called my table. Hit OK. And now if we were to run this again, which we'll do, it's actually going to take the results and turn them into that table, which I'll put inside of my data set here. So this will light up as soon as it's available. There it is. If we click on it, here is our table details down here. Let me just uh, move our query up. We'll disable the options. Now we can see it. Hit details, and there it is. So it's a smaller table, <laughs> but it's a table nonetheless with 124 rows in it. We can even export our tables to Google Cloud Storage from here. Very easy to do. Your tables or even the public data sets if you wanted to. We can just drop this down. Choose export, and there it is. Choose your format, type in your Google Cloud Storage bucket, and you're good to go. And just to show you how we can hit it from the command line just as easily here, let's bring up Terminal and uh, just do a gcloud auth login. Once we've authenticated with Google here, we will be able to do all the same things that we did in the web UI only through the command line. So now that we're authenticated, we just type in our project name, and now we can start using BQ. For instance, if we wanted to get a listing of all the tables inside of that public data set, public data, samples, just do an LS with BQ, and it's going to show us all the tables. If you wanted to look at a specific table to get information here, we can do a BQ show, and let's just do the same thing here, public data, samples, dot, table name. So let's, let's grab Wikipedia here. So you can see the syntax is data set dot table. All right, so we'll hit enter. That's going to run out, get all that information that we have uh, inside of the, the, the nice UI, the web UI, and pipe it out here through the command line. So you get your schema 
total rows, everything that you'd want to know about your table there piped back. And again, you, you can also run this interactively. So you could easily just do a BQ query, pass your query in, and I just happen to have kind of a cool query here that I'll pass in, which is going to query uh, to find all the pages that have the word Google in it using regular expressions. So you can easily tap into regular expressions to do some powerful string searching and manipulation. Now let's hit enter. So you can see what that did was spin up a, a BigQuery job, ran it, and piped back to the screen here any Wikipedia page that has the word Google in it. So this shows us the, the title, the comment, and the number of characters for that specific revision. In the CBT Micronugget, we answered the question, what is Google BigQuery? We saw that it's big data in Google's cloud. They handle the infrastructure. We can just simply focus on getting our data in there and analyzing it. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.